Hello, NMR community, and welcome back. We were on our journey discovering about the theoretical treatment of Hamiltonians under magic angle spinning. And last time, we discussed about some general expressions for spin field and spin spin interactions, and we discussed also a bit about the Zeeman Hamiltonian. This time we want to learn about two more types of Hamiltonians that are very often used in solid state NMR and these are namely the chemical shift Hamiltonian, the chemical shift anisotropy and the dipolar Hamiltonian. And at the same time, while discussing these, we also want to use the opportunity to talk about another mathematical tool that is very often used in the treatment, in the theoretical treatment of NMR in general, and that is the so-called secular approximation. So let's jump right into it. What we have on this slide here is a small reminder of what we did last time and it's the general expression for a spin field interaction. And uh, you see we have the multiplication of the vector with the spin operators ikx, iky, ikz times a coupling matrix that is different for each interaction times the field, the magnetic field vector. And what we ha want to do now is we want to derive the general expression for the chemical shift Hamiltonian. And so what we just need to do is to plug into this formula the expression for the coupling matrix for the chemical shift uh, Hamiltonian. And in this case, it is just given by minus the gyromagnetic ratio gamma times our chemical shift matrix sigma that just has is a three times three matrix that has nine entries, seg sigma xx, sigma xy, and so on and so forth. You see it here on the last row. And we can now proceed as we did last time. We just plug in our, our expression for the coupling matrix and we start doing our matrix multiplication. As we did also last time, we always assume that our magnetic field vector is along the z-axis, meaning that we have a 0, 0, b0 uh, vector and then we start with our matrix multiplication. So as we did last time, we start with the first row. We multiply sigma xx times 0 plus sigma xy times 0 plus sigma xz times b0. And this time we have a non-zero element here because we have the sig sigma xz that is paired with the b0. And if we do the same things for the other two rows, then we get to a sigma y uh, z times b0 and a sigma zz times b0. And now we just do the second matrix multiplication between the vector of the spin operators ikx, iky, ikz. We multiply it by what we just obtained now from the first matrix multiplication. And you see the calculations here on the slide. What you get in the end is minus gamma times B0 times, and now comes the whole sum that we obtained from our matrix multiplication, IKX times sigma XZ plus IKY times sigma YZ plus IKZ times sigma ZZ. And since, uh, or as you remember from last time, the expression minus gamma times B0 equals the Larmor frequency for the, our spin, so we can replace it with omega 0. In principle, you see, we did not really do something new. The calculations are rather easy, and we also get a nice expression for our chemical shift Hamiltonian. However, the story hasn't finished here. This is the expression for our Hamiltonian in the lab frame. But what we often do is that we go into an interaction frame. And to explain a bit what is the motivation uh, for an interaction frame transformation, let's look at what's written here on this slide. Let's take a simple example. And let's take the example where our total Hamiltonian is made up of the Zeeman Hamiltonian for a certain spin plus the chemical shift Hamiltonian for a certain spin. And let's just consider the isotropic chemical shift. So what do you know, like if you would look at this Hamiltonian and if you do the whole theoretical treatment, but also just by intuition, where would your spin resonate? Well, it would resonate at your Lamo frequency and then you have this extra small shift that is given by the isotropic chemical shift. And this is what you always know in an NMR, the one that is measured in PPM, and it's 
this very small shift that tells a lot about the electronic environment of our spin. So this is actually the really interesting part of the Hamiltonian. So this is the part we actually want to focus on in our treatment. And now the point is that if you look at our Zeeman interaction, the Zeeman interaction is in the order of megahertz. And what is most important is that the Zeeman interaction it only depends on the type of nucleus you have. So if you have a hydrogen, it will be the same for all the hydrogens in your molecule. So actually, one often says that the Zeeman interaction is one of the biggest parts of the Hamiltonian, but it's also one of the most boring parts of the Hamiltonian. And this is the reason why when we do a theoretical treatment, we actually want to somehow get rid of this semen interaction so that what is left is not the big uninteresting part, but it's really our small chemical shift, our small shift in PPM, which is actually giving us something about molecular information and structural information. And to do this, we do, as we said before, we do an interaction frame transformation. So how do we do an interaction frame transformation? Well, the idea is the following. If we have our Zeeman interaction, then what, is, what will be produced is we have a precession with the Lamo frequency. And what we can do is that we move into a frame that rotates exactly with the Lamo frequency, with the frequency of our uh, that is given by our Zeeman interaction. And in then in this frame, when we sit exactly and we when we have a frame that rotates exactly at the Lamo frequency, you can imagine that the part of the Zeeman, uh, the Zeeman interaction is going to be um, factored out and you have only the other parts of our Hamiltonians left. And in order to do this, let's think about first from an intuitive point of view. And what actually happens is that when we move into our interaction frame, and this interaction frame will rotate around the z-axis with this omega zero, then we can imagine that the ikz operator that is actually pointing along the z-axis is going to be completely unaffected by this rotation because it's still pointing along the z-axis and our new coordinate system is fixed along the z-axis and just rotates in the x-y plane. So we can imagine that the ikz operator will just stay exactly the same. What is going to be different is that the ikx and the iky operators will start to pick up a time dependence. Why? Because under the feet you have this a new coordinate system that is moving around with the, omega, uh, with the omega zero frequency in the xy plane. So you can imagine from an intuitive perspective that also our uh, ikx and our iky will pick up some type of time dependence. And this is actually where our secular approximation comes in. Because what we actually say is that when we, what we imagine is that when we have something that is Pick, that picked up a time dependence in the rotating frame, then we can imagine that this time dependence, the effect of this time dependence will average out over time. So you're not going to see the effect that these time dependent terms have. And that's why you just simply, in a very simple approximation, you just say that you drop all the time dependent terms as soon as you moved into your interaction frame. And in our case, what are the time-dependent terms? We said it, we have the ikx that is time-dependent, we have the iky that is time-dependent, so we drop these two in the expression of our chemical shift Hamiltonian, but our ikz that we said is going to stay time-independent because it's oriented around the z-axis and our frame move, uh, rotates around the z-axis, so keeps it unaffected. But that, well, that term, the ikz term, we will keep it. And so when we do this secular approximation, then our chemical shift Hamiltonian will be greatly reduced from the lateral expression that we had in the previous slide with the three terms. It will be reduced to only one expression with one term. And you see down here, you have the Larmor frequency of, this, of your spin of interest times ikz times sigma zz. So in the end of this slide, we want to point out two things. First of all, the secular approximation is often also called the high field approximation. And the reason for this is that the approximation only holds true uh, and works nicely 
if your magnetic field interaction, if your Zeeman frequency, if your Lama frequency is much bigger than the frequencies of your interactions. And this is usually the case in NMR, but not always. If you think about uh, dipole interactions, that's not really a big problem. You have them in the order of kilohertz. But if you think about quadrupolar interaction, for example, where actually the interaction, the strength of the interaction cell in itself is going to be rather becoming close to the Lama, to the strength of the interaction of the Lama frequencies, so in the order of megahertz, then your whole secular approximation starts breaking down. You cannot just drop the time-dependent terms and actually you need a much more refined treatment where you keep uh, get some additional uh, higher order correction terms into your expressions for the Hamiltonians. So, but for the beginning, let's just work with the secular approximation within this, uh, this small lecture series. We will mostly work with the secular approximation, so we don't have to think about this too much. And the second thing I wanted to point out is, we said that from an intuitive point of view, we imagine the IKZ is appointed along the z-axis, will not pick up a time dependence while the other two, uh, two did, and uh, we will not really focus on how this time dependence looks like. But of course, this is just uh, very vaguely speaking, there is also a full mathematically rigorous way to do the interaction frame transformation and you see it written down here on the last line what you basically do is you uh, you do your transformation by a sandwich of exponential terms we said if we want to move into a frame with uh, with uh, rotating with the Lama frequency what you do is you multiply the term e to the i omega zero i z times t times the operator that you want to transform, in this case, for example, the ix operator times e to the uh, minus i omega zero izt.